And that's not the first time Trump's trade policy has been met with a rebuke from people that look at his policies. When Trump gave his big trade speech in Pennsylvania in late June, he cited research from a think tank, the Economic Policy Institute, EPI. The president of EPI made a point of publishing a corrective to Trump's trade speech, the Trump Trade Scam by Lawrence Michelle and Lawrence Michelle. President of the Economic Policy Institute joins me now. All right, um, good to have you. So, look, you guys have been fighting this battle on trade for years, 20, 30 years in which economic uh, uh, the economics profession had a consensus these deals were good, that they weren't doing the kind of concentrated harm you said they were. You've been on the you've been sort of on the right side of this in certain ways. History's moved in your direction. Now here comes Donald Trump to champion the cause of of busting up trade deals. What say you? Well, first, uh, thanks for that acknowledgement, and good to be with you, Chris. Uh, it's also important to note that it's not just Donald Trump, but it's also Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders. Everybody is now agreeing that uh, these trade deals uh, do harm to uh, the vast majority of America's workers. Okay, and everybody is against the uh, TPP deal uh, that's been been brought forward. So uh, I feel like uh, our position has been validated across the board. Now, Trump uh, citing our work many times makes us very uncomfortable because nobody wants to be associated with a bigot. But he is running what I do call as a trade scam. Uh, let me explain that. First, he brings up trade, but he ends up spending most of his time talking about cutting corporate taxes and cutting regulation. That is actually the old tried and failed GOP policies. Now, if Cutting taxes and, and cutting regulations were great for the economy. We'd all be moving to Kansas where they radically ta cut taxes. Right. We would all remember George W. Bush as the prosperity president and the Bush boom, which we don't. Okay, so what does he say about trade? Well, the fact is that uh, Donald Trump s thinks that he's a great negotiator and he's going to do great trade deals. But no one has ever asked him, and he has never specified what exactly yes. do you want to change? This is the thing that drives me nuts. We go, he says NAFTA was terrible. To TV, look, there are things in these deals you got to be able to point to the specifics. The other thing is, and I'm curious what you think about this. Look, there are ways, the, the, the sort of, you know, the kind of, the predisposition of economists to say, look, free trade and exchange makes everyone better off, which was a kind of guiding bias that I think drove the kind of Washington consensus and support for these. The opposite of that is also true. Like, if you put up an 80% tariff on everything, if you started passing laws that companies just could not leave legally, there would be economic damage from that. I, you, as a, as a trade deal skeptic, would concede, correct? Yes, but the fact is that it's, it's worse than that, really, Chris, because when Donald Trump says uh, Ford Motor Company won't be able to move jobs when I'm president, he has no way to do that. He has not specified what is he going to do. He can't pass a law that says uh, Ford Motor Company can't move jobs to Mexico. And the fact is that he's not really able to fix our problems through somehow better trade agreements. Uh, I'm with Larry Summers on something. If we want to have an international economic agenda and go for a treaty, then we should be getting countries together to figure out how do we tax corporate incomes. Yep. Because there's a trillion dollars a year shifted from workers to companies every year. Let's work on that. Yeah, that's, that's a good, that would be a good thing to pursue a, quote, good deal on, right? I mean, if, if the idea is that you can negotiate good deals, you can get better binding good deals, there's a lot of income that's sloshing around and essentially being hid, and if you want to bring the world together and negotiate a good deal, that, that would be a good thing to pursue. Let's end the tax havens. You know, let's, let's all stop, you know, where companies are going to go to different countries to get the lowest corporate tax rate. They can all stop that if they want. So uh, the other thing is, we need to look at what Donald omits. He would make it seem as if workers are suffering uh, wage stagnation solely because of trade. Globalization is part of it. And as you know, I've studied this right. for, for decades. But he omits uh, many other things, and he's against things like raising the minimum wage. Right. He doesn't want to strengthen unions. He wants a national right to work law. He now wants to raise interest rates, which will slow economic right. growth. 
and yeah. raise unemployment. Not, not to mention that the majority of workers in America are in non-tradable sectors, right? So the majority of workers are not working in, in, in sectors where their jobs are being shipped. There's, there's a huge economic problem that lies outside of, say, manufacturing jobs going overseas. And I think Donald Trump has successfully used that as a sort of totem to invoke for all of the economy's problems, somewhat effectively. But if you go and read what EPI is up to, you will see that is not the whole story. Lawrence, Michelle, thank you for your time. Appreciate it. Thank you. Still to come, the enthusiasm level among key voting demographic is in the tank. How that could affect Hillary Clinton.